Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode. We'll be talking to Michael Hennings, who is the Director of Business Development at Hubble and PCX. So welcome, Michael. Hey, Chris. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you here, sir. So excited to have you. I'd love to get these hero conversations going, just hearing about our hero's journey. So can you tell me a little bit about your journey through industry? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so my journey really began back when I was in high school and college. Uh, my father was a general contractor. I wanted to learn a trade. Started working as a carpenter's apprentice over summers, learning to swing a hammer, really learning about being on job sites. From there, after college and a master's degree, found myself in electrical distribution, uh, which was great. You know, a, a company very similar to Eco, uh, working in a warehouse, inside sales, outside sales. And uh, from there, really started to realize you know, I was a, knew a lot about everything, but wasn't a specialist in anything. And as I was traveling with some manufacturers, I learned I really wanted to be a subject matter expert and made my way over to Hubble from there and was a territory manager uh, in both Louisiana and Florida. And then Hubble provided me a lot of opportunities for growth in my career, took on leadership role, managing sales teams uh, across the Southeast, then moved more into a technical sales role, leading a team of market experts that had responsibility for our end user engagement, go to market strategies. Uh, technical standards for uh, telecommunications, data centers, oil and gas, solar, wind, really across the board, and then uh, have expanded that role uh, across Hubble. And then from there, uh, we brought PCX into the Hubble family, which has been really exciting. So it allows us to take all of these great Hubble products and put them into more of a complete engineered solution, get closer to our end users, really work with data center owners and, and large commercial companies to design very specific products to help mm -hmm. them scale and get to market faster on their large builds. And mm -hmm. that's how, how we got to where we are today. I mean, that's, that's an incredible story. So it sounds like you've been, so have you primarily been calling on industrial customers your whole career? Primarily industrial customers, uh, industrial and technology customers. Right. A uh, right. little bit of commercial in there, but absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm curious because, I mean, we definitely serve that industrial uh, end user here at, at Eco SY. So from your experience, do you see any common challenges that these, these end users are facing these days? Man, it's finding new innovative solutions that are also readily available, right? You have mm -hmm. everybody wants the, the newest product that helps them be more sustainable, helps their product be more reliable. You know what? What we look for at Hubble are to be an industry leader that is competitive in price, right? A lot of our, our Hubble products are an overall low cost of ownership, but mm -hmm. very high cost of failure. So we look to provide things that are, are very reliable, very safe, that last the test, you know, they really stand the test time, last a long time, and uh, don't require that as, as much falls, right? Very low cost of ownership, very high cost of failure. We want to be that most reliable guy in the market with something new, something innovative. Yeah, I, I am curious. I mean, just how long ago was it that Hubble did Hubble take that make that PCX part of the offering? Was it was this, has this been pretty recent? Yeah, pretty recent. About six months ago, it was mid early mid July when we oh, wow. uh, completed okay. that acquisition and really rolled them into the the Hubble family. And it's been really excited for us because there's so much overlap in our customers, our targets. Um, and our, our growth projections, they've been yeah. uh, they've been great. And the people at PCX have been really excited about a lot of the new resources that Hubble has brought to them and giving them the ability to really scale and grow and expand on what they what they're doing. Right. Yeah. I know for me, I used to sell a lot of Hubble. You know, I, and when I was an outside sales rep, I sold to a lot of our, our aggregate, our quarries and things like that. So definitely Hubble has that heavy industrial brand. It's, de it's definitely recognized there. So. Maybe when you think about Hubble, is there something that that people automatically think of that you you like to take a chance to debunk and or or hey Hubble is not just this we do these different things as well I'll love to just see what your your thoughts are there. Oh, absolutely! I think when most people think of Hubble, they think of a wiring device, right? They think of uh -huh. a, a twist lock, a plug, a or a separate, right? To that connector, because that's where Hubble really made a name for itself. That's where. Hubble started 100 years ago, right? But Hubble has grown heavily through through acquisitions as well as organically over the last 50 years. 
we've brought a lot of other companies into who we are and what we do from Burndy's grounding and bonding and power connectors to Acme transformers and other power control brands to, you know, cable pathway, you know, your basket tray, your, your ladder tray, start getting into conduit fittings and outlet boxes. Uh, you'd be really surprised if you went on Hubble.com and clicked on our brands, the yeah. 80 plus different brands you're going to find under the Hubble name. You know, at Hubble, when we bring a family, we really believe in the brand equity that comes with these these companies that oftentimes started as family companies. And we mm-hmm. keep that name. We allow them to still operate with a lot of autonomy. So people don't always recognize the the breadth that Hubble has to offer. I think a lot of people would be surprised to go in and see just how many markets we play in and how many of the products they're touching every day that they maybe didn't realize were, were Hubble products. That's really cool. I mean, I had no idea it was that number of different brands that that Hubble represented. So that's incredible. Sounds like an awesome business model. And also sounds like a great place to work. So if you you got some listeners out there now, Michael, who are listening and they they want to pursue a career in industry, uh, maybe they're thinking about Hubble. What advice would you give them to to get them started on the right foot heading in down the uh, career path in industry today? Man, I'd say just the more they just ask a lot of questions. Look for things that are innovative. Look for things that are disruptors in the market because those are the things that are going to continue to, to grow and, and challenge you. You know, don't don't get content doing what you're doing today. Mm. Keep challenging yourself to learn more about a new product. Learn more about the next product. Learn more about your, your customers and the markets. They're not only serving today, but that they could be serving tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Ten years ago, Chris, I'd have no idea how much time I'd be spending in a data center. Didn't even know what a data center was 10 years ago. Right. But the, the growth from industrial to telecommunications to, to data centers and the expansion it's allowed us to sell our products at Hubble has been really exciting and is very exciting to me and led us down the path to, to having PCX as well. So just, yeah. just keep asking those questions, keep looking for, for new innovative markets and, and innovative products. And when someone says, hey, would you be interested in X? Man, say yes and and learn about it and just keep moving. That's right. Lean into that. I mean, you have to get used to being uncomfortable. And I love how you say just 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 keep moving forward and keep asking questions and be, uh, you know, the, the, you can't ask enough questions these days to grow forward. So I am curious too, for for Hubble or for you directly, you know, how, what is the take on mentorship? So if somebody comes in and they, and they and they're growing throughout the through the company. Do they have mentors? Do, should they be seeking mentors? Do you have mentors? I just I love to just see how different people uh, what their take is on mentorship and uh, you know so how that impacts their career. Yeah, great question. I absolutely love mentorships. I had some great mentors coming up. So at Hubble, we have some very structured programs for mentorship, uh-huh. uh, but primarily for uh, young employees that are just coming in. You know, early early career development mentorship with senior sales, senior engineering, senior finance, and try to get them exposure to a lot of different parts of the business rather than just their their specialty, right? Whatever that may be. But as we grow, it becomes less structured. What I encourage people to do is look for those people throughout your company or other companies that that have the roles you're looking to get into in the future and ask them questions. Spend yeah. some time with them. You know, grab a cup of coffee, get on a get on a Teams call, make and in, invite them to join you on sales calls or in meetings to to get a fresh perspective and to get other ideas and how to how, how to push your career forward. You know, I had a really early in my career when I was in sales, I had a, a great mentor that had been in the industry for 20 years. And uh, as I was following him around on on sales calls, I started saying things and making the same jokes he makes. And he kind of pulled me aside. He goes, hey, when, when you want to be in sales, you want to grow your career, don't try to be like me just because I'm successful. He goes, you still have to be you. It's got to come off. Your jokes have to come off as genuine. Your stories have to come off as truly genuine and, and come from, you know, come from your experience. He goes, don't try to be me. Make sure to be yourself in all these calls. Just learn from my experience and learn from how I interact with customers. He goes, just be, be genuine. Don't try to, don't try to be me. And I always took that to heart, and I think it made me a much, much better salesperson and a much better yeah. sales leader as I grew. That wanted to develop as I started having employees working for me. I really work at developing their strengths, 
to push right. them in the best direction for them, right? Don't try to mold them into me. In fact, I really go out of my way to try to hire people that are different from me. And then uh, across my team, I try to hire guys that are different from each other so that they mentor and learn from each other, even in a non-structured program. Yeah. That's incredible. I love that advice about just being genuine. We don't have enough of that out there, Michael. So it uh, sounds like the mentors you had were definitely pouring in some great advice to you. So uh, last question on your career here. When you had a great day, you crushed it. You come home, you're smiling, you're, you're, you're pumped up, you're full of joy. What did you do that day? Oh, man, I had a, I had a win. I had a big win. I love hunting elephants, Chris. I love okay. tracking them, spending months trying to find that big project, getting in early and then getting that big order or getting that big that big yes at the end of the day. Um, okay. uh, at the end of the day, I love being an elephant hunter. And there's uh, something oh. exciting. I don't want to take away from all the small wins along the journey, but that big project you've been chasing for two years that, that you just closed on, that was, that was a good day. That was a good day. That was a good day. I love it. Well, let's, let's, let's get off the career path a little bit. Let's have a little fun here. Uh, get to know you outside of work. So do you have any hobbies, anything you like to do for fun? So I think I had two that really take up most of my time. A, being a father, I, I coach my son's Little League baseball team, and I absolutely love it. I have a blast out there. It brings back to my childhood, getting to hit and throw and catch and develop these young, these young baseball players. And then personally for myself, I love the game of golf. You know, something about golf, it's just me and that course. I'm not competing with anybody else. I'm just trying to be better than the last time I played 18 holes. Right. And just that, that continuous development and, and one-on-one. Uh, something about that I just, just love and continues to drive me to get out there and play again every week. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, God, I got to ask you, so from a baseball standpoint, how old is your son? So what, what age are you, are, you t- are you coaching here? So my son uh, is playing 12U baseball. He'll uh, be okay. 12 in May. But he's been playing since he was four. Because I've coached yeah. <laughs> close to – 18 seasons, I think, of baseball throughout the years from T-ball and coach pitch and intermediate through majors. And I uh, loved every bit of it. That's awesome. That is incredible. So w- w- what position does he play? So uh, it was a joke. He's really a utility player. His favorite position, he loves being catcher. He loves being okay. in the middle of the plays. He loves talking to the pitcher. He loves getting that equipment on. But he's played just about every position out on that, out on that diamond. He'll go wherever, wherever he needs to be. But his, uh, his love – is definitely being behind the plate of catcher. Okay. And that's good that he, that he can, can do that. Cause I know <clears throat> too many players, man, they just, they get stuck in one position and they don't experience the different, the different, you know, areas out on the ball field. So, you know, kudos for you. Sound like he's had a great coach that's uh, encouraging him to do that. So that's <laughs> awesome. I had some, I had some good assistant coaches along the way, Chris, that helped, helped teach me. <laughs> we all do, brother. That's it. That's it. Well, hats off to you. Cause we definitely need more men stepping up and, and, and coaching and, and leading their son. So that, that is awesome. Love to hear that. Uh, so how about for, for, for fun? Do you have any, do you, are you a podcast guy? Do you listen to uh, any podcast? Man, just the eco ask why. Okay. Uh, well, so yeah. I've been, uh, now I forget the name armchair. It's one with Dak Shepard. Uh, he's on uh, our armchair, armchair cat. They used to listen to a lot. I really enjoy it. Okay. Okay. It's, okay. it's just entertaining. It's fun. It's, it's comedy. Some past the time when I'm driving down the road. All right. Well, let's have a quick lightning round. I like to do this with all our with all our heroes. Uh, we'll have a little fun here. Just a couple quick questions, and we'll wrap this up. So, uh, so just to get us going, what's your favorite food? Probably tacos. You can put anything Ta- into a taco. It's fast. It's portable. Nah, just everything wrapped in a tortilla is good by me. There you go. There you go. How about adult beverage? Bourbon. Good okay. bourbon. Any? What brand? I've got a few. Uh, my my go to is probably an Elijah Craig, my everyday sipping. But if I really want to spoil myself, I'll probably go towards a a Blanton's or, or a really good Eagle Rare. Okay, okay, love it. What's your favorite app on your phone? Game Changer. That's a uh, baseball app. When I'm traveling, I'm on the road. Game Changer allows me to see exactly what's happening in my my kids' baseball games, so I can see how every hitter's performed, every play that's happening, what the score is, all in live time. It's it's the coolest thing for. Uh, for a parent that travels and every now and then I got to miss a game. I don't have so to. So who's it. updating it on the other end? Somebody at the game? Somebody on the team. So we usually have an assistant coach or a parent that's updating it. Like, you know, the old days where they had the scorebook and they're putting everything yeah. in my hand. It's done in an app now. And then it, uh, it summarizes the game. It tracks stats, but it allows me to watch the game if I'm on the road and I'm going to miss one. So 
but never have that, to miss a baseball game or a hit again. That's incredible. I did not, I have never heard of that. Okay. That's awesome. So what's, what is your favorite sports team? Florida Gators. So Florida, Florida Gators. Gators. Okay. SEC football doesn't get any better. Okay. Go Tebow. All right. Okay. I hear you, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a – how about a guilty pleasure? You got any guilty pleasures, Michael? Uh, what is a guilty pleasure? You know what? I, I, I hate to put this out there, but I'm going to say the uh, the Food Network. Sunday mornings, go. cup of coffee. I don't want to watch the news. I don't want to pay attention to a movie. Food right. Network goes up, watch them cook, and it just inspires me to get out, grill, do something for dinner that night. But I'd there say that's go. a guilty pleasure for me. There you go. Nothing wrong with that one. Now, the last question for you, Michael. Dogs or cats? Dogs. All right. Definitely was a dog guy. I love one that I can play catch, run around and play games with. I want love to it. Love it. There was only one right answer, and you got it, man. So <laughs> we're, we're good to go there. So we call it Eco Ask Why, Michael. We, we always wrap up with the why. So if somebody wants to know what your personal why is, what are you going to tell them? Man, my personal why is just to never be content. My personal why is I just always want to be challenged. I don't want to be bored. Uh, the only thing constant is change, and I just want to welcome that change in everything that I do. That's awesome. That's awesome. Where where should the listeners go to connect with you to learn more or, or Hubble and, and uh, just to, where would you like to direct them? Well, you can find me personally on LinkedIn, but uh, direct you to our Hubble's website, www.hubble.com or towards www.pcxcorp.com to learn more about what PCX does and their, uh, their modular approach to the industry. All right. Well, we'll make sure we have all that stuff synced up in the show notes for you listeners. And Michael, it's been a pleasure to get to know you, sir. Thank you so much for sharing your story here on Eco Ask Why. Absolutely. Chris, thank you so much for having me on all the support Eco shows to Hubble and PCX. Well, you have a great day, sir. Sir, Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, Michael is a fun guy, right? So he's a, he's got, he's a firecracker. He's got a lot of energy. He, he loves that change and always being at the forefront. And he's making a big impact in industry. So it was such an honor be able to sit down with him, hear his story. Hopefully you guys got some inspiration out of that. I definitely did. A lot of just, just, I just like his energy. He's just a fun, fun guy to be around. So again, check out the show notes. There'll be ways to connect with him directly. And you can learn more about him and the wonderful things that, that Hubble and PCX are doing. Uh, definitely sounds like he has uh, got a, a bright future ahead, doing a lot of things and wish him the best of luck on that baseball field as well. So uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this one. If you did, give us a rating, five stars, write a review, one or two sentences, really. That's all we need is just a couple of sentences. That makes all the difference in the world. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, connect with us there. Subscribe to this on your, on your podcast channel as well so that you'll be updated for each and every week when we have these conversations coming out. So we hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the show notes for all the links, the links and remember to keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. W-H-Y dot com.